In this video, we will cover the male reproductive system. So here we have the penis and the penis ends in the glands. If we remove this part, we can see that the glands of the penis is covered by the prepuce, which is this skin right here. Now, if we put this back, we can see right here, this is the endoscrotum, and within the scrotum, we find the testes, which is the male gonad, at which the sperm is produced. We can see that the sperm is produced right here, but the sperm will leave the male body through the urethral orifice that we have at the tip of the penis. And there is no connection from the place where the sperm is produced and where the sperm will leave the male body. Consequently, you can expect that there is a series of ducts that will take the sperm from where it was produced to where it leaves the male body. And what happens is that the sperm is produced in the testes, then it goes into the epididymis. And the epididymis connects to the ductus deferens. And the ductus deferens goes up into the pelvic cavity and goes behind the male urinary bladder, which is this structure that you're seeing here. If we look at the posterior aspect of the male urinary bladder, we can see that the ductus deferens, which is bringing the sperm from the testes, then we have here the sperm that was inside of the ductus deferens meeting with secretions that was produced by the seminal gland. And then these two, the sperm and also the seminal gland secretion will go into this duct, which is named the ejaculatory duct. Now the ejaculatory duct is within the male prostate. So this is the prostate gland. And if we look at the section view, we see that this is the prostate gland. And here we have the ejaculatory duct. Through the ejaculatory duct, we can see that then the sperm will reach this section of the male urethra that is within the prostate. And the section of the male urethra that is within the prostate is named prosthetic urethra. After that, we have the portion of the male urethra that is within the urogenital diaphragm. And you can remember that a diaphragm is something that will divide into two parts, right? So you have the top part and the bottom part right here. And what happens is that in the, this aspect right here of the urogenital diaphragm is where we find the external urethral sphincter. So if you have the external urethral sphincter surrounding this portion of the male urethra, you can expect that this portion of the male urethra needs to be flexible enough so the sphincter can contract and close it at this level. And then when the external urethral sphincter contracts, for example, the urine that is within the urinary bladder will not be able to keep going and getting out of the male body because this sphincter is contract. So this portion of the male urethra that is going through the external urethral sphincter that's right here, very close to the urethra and this part right here is named the urogenital diaphragm. This portion of the male urethra needs to be flexible enough. And that's how you do to remember that this portion of the male urethra is named membranous because a membrane is something very flexible. It's membranous urethra. After the membranous urethra, if we keep following the urethra down, we have it, all this segment of the male urethra, within one of the two male erectile tissues. And this male erectile tissue is named corpus spongiosum. And you can find the corpus spongiosum in this aspect and also on the superior part. What happens is, is that the corpus spongiosum literally surrounds the segment of the male urethra that's going through it. And that's why this portion of the male urethra was named sponge urethra because it goes through the corpus spongiosum. Since it surrounds it, when you make a cut like this, you will find the corpus spongiosum below the sponge urethra and also on the top part of the sponge urethra. Pay attention to this part right here. This is what we named the glands, right? 
Now you can literally see that the glands of the penis is an extension of the corpus spongiosum to the sides. So basically the entire glands of the penis is the corpus spongiosum, one of the two male erectile tissues. Now, on the top part right here, we have the other male erectile tissue. It, this one is named corpus cavernosum. The corpus cavernosum is actually two. We, there is one on the right side and one on the left side. And you see on them these gaps. You see this? And these gaps is what gets filled up with blood. And when the corpus cavernosum gets filled up with blood, what happens? Then the penis becomes erect. And that's how males get an erection. Now think about this. If this, all these little gaps get filled up with blood and the sponge urethra is right underneath it, what would happen to the sponge urethra every time the male has an erection if nothing was keeping this urethra open, so stabilizing the urethra? If this thing, if this corpus cavernosus gets filled up with blood, and nothing was stabilizing the sponge urethra, the sponge urethra would collapse. So the main function of the corpus spongiosum is to keep the male urethra, specifically the sponge urethra open, so when a male has an erection, the sperm can leave the male body through the urethral orifice that is right here. If we look at this part and we identify the testes and the epididymis. When we look at the section version, we can see here the testes and on the top part we see the epididymis. Another thing we can see here is that we have a muscle and this muscle is named cremaster muscle. This muscle is responsible for bringing the scrotum closer to the pelvic cavity in case the environment is too cold for the sperm development. So this is the cream master muscle right here.